ナバースを応援の巨人ガントウィップバレットスコールウィンドシューダーシステムレスレッドストーフルカウンター What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here. Welcome back to Monster Hunter World, and this is my Lance build. Now, the Lance is the no-nonsense weapon of the game. In a sense, it's like the Ron Swanson of weapons, if you will. Uh, it's very straightforward, relatively simple to pick up and learn, and probably the hardest part about lancing is just learning counter timings, and that's mostly monster knowledge. So to jump right into it, a couple of basics we're going to cover when it comes to attacking. Your basic flow combat is going to be... Three thrusts and a hop. Now generally you should try and do a side hop or a forward hop because that will minimize the distance you are from the monster. As you saw earlier, the back hop puts you quite a ways back, which may put you out of range. Additionally, for the first two thrusts, you should always try to do high thrust, as a high thrust will deal 58, while a mid thrust will deal 53. Now, obviously, these numbers are going to vary based on your setup, but the point is high thrust does more damage for the first two thrusts. The third thrust will not matter. As you saw there, high thrust 3 did 70, mid thrust 3, well, it crit for 85, but it would have also been 70. Uh, now, as for some other things, as I mentioned, your back hops are excellent mobility if you're just trying to quickly reposition. You can basically flip around, whoop, do a poke, and hop backwards. Alternatively, while guarding, if you hold forward and hit triangle and circle, you have the leaping thrust, giving you some short-range mobility while also dealing damage. If you want a slightly safer option, you can do the same thing, but with two triangles to do a guard attack or a guard dash into a shield attack, uh, which basically allows you to block just a little bit sooner and of course will deal blunt damage as opposed to slicing type damage. Now aside from that, uh, let's talk about our big mobility, which of course is going to be our dash attack. Now you do dash attack by hitting triangle and circle while you're guarding, and this allows you to basically become Thomas the Tank Engine and chase after the monster, continually penetrating it all the way until your lance is buried so far inside of its ass that it has to go to the ER room to get it out. Now while you are doing dash attack, some things to note, you can go left and right with X to do a dash step to reposition. You can also use the left stick to slightly turn your direction. In addition, you can do back and X to completely change direction, such as that. And if you do forward and X, you will do a jump into an advancing jump thrust with triangle, which is actually pretty effective at mounting the monster. Now, the last thing I want to touch on before we proceed is going to be our counter thrust. Now, counter thrust works by holding right trigger and hitting circle. And basically what that's going to do is when you receive an attack, you're going to automatically counter it and the thrust. This will last uh, for a good amount of time. You can hold it pretty long, but it is not all-encompassing. You know, it lasts for roughly three or four seconds before it's going to go off on its own, so you do have to have some sense of timing with it. Now, a very important thing to mention with Counter Thrust is with this setup, this can block any single attack in the game in Counter Thrust. However, I want to emphasize on the word single. Some monster attacks are multi-hit attacks, and if a multi-hit attack is coming, you should not counter thrust, instead go into your power guard, which will allow you to block both attacks, and then follow up with a thrust. The main reason being here that even if you want to guard longer, a counter thrust will automatically proc, whether you want it to or not, as soon as you take the first attack. So for something like the Nirigante Dive Bomb, for example, if you go for a traditional counter thrust, what's going to happen is you're going to block the dive bomb, your character is going to start thrusting, and then the rest of the drag as Nirigante crashes into you is going to end up hitting you and dealing damage. Uh, as for our power guard, that's quite simple. From this, while we're still holding right trigger, we just hit X. As you can see, it does drain stamina very fast. So the basic idea here is if you know an attack's coming that you can't counter thrust, go into counter thrust, hit guard, block the attack, and then hit circle for your counter thrust. That should also be your main wake up move. The target's sleeping, you want to wake him up. Power guard into counter thrust. And from power guard, you can also do the leaping thrust or alternatively do our Thomas the Tank Engine maneuver. But that's all there really is to the Lance. It's not a uh, very difficult weapon. As I mentioned, the hardest part of Lance is going to be learning how to properly use your counter timings to effectively counter the world. Now, this build was called the Ultimate Shield, and for good reason. With the setup I'm about to show you, you can block every single attack in the game. 
nothing can kill you, counter every single attack in the game, if played correctly. So, to jump into the build and what it is exactly, the first thing we have is Perdition's Hand. Now, this is the lance you get going down the Nier Gigante tree, and we picked this lance up for a couple reasons. The first being that we have a very hefty amount of blue sharpness, followed by a decent chunk of green sharpness. Now, to keep maximum uptime on our Thomas the Tank engine, you ideally need to be in your highest sharpness, because once you drop down, you're going to start bouncing off your target. So because of that, we basically have two options. Either go for a hefty bar of sharpness, or alternatively, go for protective polish. Since I had already been working protective polish in on so many other builds, I felt that I wanted to go for a more defensive option here, and hence went for a lance that, instead of relying on a little bit of a white that had protective polish, we went with a nice, healthy chunk of blue. Additionally, because of the hyper-defensive nature of this build, I find it particularly effective at taking down Elder Dragons, and on that note, a high amount of Elder Seal works in quite nice to just further facilitate that. Uh, moving down from there, Iron Side Charm 3. Now this charm will give us 3 points in guard, and I would consider this a necessity for any Lance build. Uh, commonly in Monster Hunter, you have two forms of Lancing, Evade Lancing and Guard Lancing. In Monster Hunter World, my personal opinion is that Guard Lancing is superior. Evade Lance was uh, the king for a very long time, and just because of how Counter Thrust and Power Guarding works, Guard Lancing is extremely potent in World. I can't stress that enough. If you've been Evade Lancing up until now, try Guard Lancing, and you'll be like, wow, this is just absolutely silly. Uh, so, definite auto-inclusion right here, giving us three points of Guard. Moving on from there, of course, the Dragon King Eye Patch for the weakness exploit. Now, with the Lance, I find that very commonly I may end up under the monster. And the biggest thing with the Lance is you have very high uptime. You're constantly going to be hitting the target. You're constantly going to be poking it. But if you're under it, you may not be hitting a weak point. So if you find that you're not consistently getting weak points, feel free to swap this out. However, we are only going to be running two pieces of weakness exploit with this build. So it doesn't necessarily hurt to pick it up. Moving down from there, three pieces of Valhazak. We have the Alpha Male, giving us two points of recovery speed and some dragon attack, helping out Perdition's hand there. We have the Valhazak Bracers for peak performance and three level one decoration slots. And we have the Valhazak Coil Beta for two level one decoration slots and a second point in peak performance. And then lastly, we wrap things up with the Damascus Greaves Beta for that level two decoration slot and two points in defense boost. Now the legs are very much open to your choice here. Uh, I went through a lot of legs basically just looking for one that had a level 2 gem slot. The main alternative I would consider here to work in would be the Kushala Cruce beta for Evade Extender. I actually found that I didn't like Evade Extender at all with this build because I found that I ended up hopping more than I wanted to and it was pulling me off my target. However, a lot of people do like Evade Extender with Lances, so it's an easy slot in option if you so choose. Now moving on to the decorations, and this is a fairly decoration heavy build, I'll say it outright, and on that note I want to make a statement about that. I've noticed a lot of people saying that, you know, these builds require a lot of decorations, it requires RNG, and I have bad luck, and, you know, I know you guys probably don't want to hear this, but at the end of the day, that's Monster Hunter. The end game for Monster Hunter is a grind. It's just like if you were to grind through Diablo 3 or you were to grind in Neo. You know, you're going to be grinding, you're going to be killing monsters, and you're going to be relying on RNG to get loot. And eventually you'll get those decorations that you need. But I have people saying stuff like, oh, well, I've killed like 20 Elder Dragons. Y'all, I have close to 300 hours in this game. And what that means is that roughly the first 200 were campaigns, so I've spent probably about 100 hours so far just farming for decorations. So yeah, I got a buttload. But you can't be being like, oh, I put in 20 hours of farming and I don't have these decorations. Because if that's the attitude and the approach you're going to take to Monster Hunter, to be honest, this isn't the game for you. The end game for Monster Hunter is farming, and if you want to get the badass sets and super optimized, you're going to have to farm. So if you don't have this loadout, I'd suggest going for something like Uragon so you could still pick up the guard up bonus as well as some other stuff that's kind of nice to Lance. But with all that being said now and my rant over, let's go into what we're running. 
So the first thing you'll notice is I have two defensive jewels, and that's because we already have two defense coming in from the Damascus Greaves. So this boosts us up to level four defense, which is defense plus 20 and three to all elemental resistances. Moving on from there, we have the shield jewel, which gives us guard up. Now this is the three piece set bonus that you get from the Uragon set. And I find this to be absolutely fantastic. A lot of people say that you don't need guard up, that you're fine with guard three. And the main difference here is that with just having three points in guard, yeah, you can block just about anything, but it's going to absolutely demolish your stamina. With having guard up, you can shut down every single attack in the game, just like you saw in the opener here, with taking almost no damage. Yo Supernovas, Valhazak Death Breaths, Nir Gigante Dive Bomb, it does not matter. Just holding right trigger, nothing can get through you. It's ridiculous. So moving on from there, we got three slots here in the Valzak Bracers. I went for the Triple Vitality just because an extra 50 health is pretty sexy in my opinion. Uh, alternatively, you could go for something like Speed Sharpening or Speed Eater or whatever you want. These three slots are really just kind of up for, for personal preference, but I really like having the extra health there because you know, with a build called the Ultimate Shield, I really wanted to make something that kind of embodied the essence of a true unkillable tank, and so that was a natural inclusion. Uh, we do have two Iron Wall Jewels. Now, these give us points of guard, and a lot of people think that level 5 guard is overkill. And, you know, it might be overkill. Maybe you could get by just fine with level 3. But the massively decreased impact and the stamina depletion reduced by 50% is so insanely absurd on a build that focuses around defensive play that I had to include it. With stuff like this, I can just hold right trigger and just outright block an Irigante's dive bomb, and it doesn't even do 50% of my stamina. It's, it's, uh, it's absurd. Absurd is the only word that can be used to describe how OP level 5 guard combined with guard up is. Lastly, we have a flawless jewel giving us three points in peak performance. Now, I know a lot of people are probably like, this build's just full of defense, but I'd like to point out that having level 7 attack gives you 21 attack and 5 affinity, whereas level 3 peak performance gives you 20 attack. So a very minimal difference here. And on top of that, because of how much defense and guard we have and the fact that we're counter blocking and the fact that we have Valhazak Vitality, we are almost always at full health. And you guys will see that when we actually get into the, uh, the showcase of the bill where we fight something. But this is going to be up, I would say, 90 to 95 percent of the time. So while you could go ahead and slot in more attack, maybe even drop out the Iron Wall, the defense, and the Vit, and slot seven attack gems in here, and hit a little bit harder, uh, you know, you'll do damage with this. You will do do damage. You can kill every monster in under the 15 minute time limit if you have to. It could have more attack, but hey, the build's called the Ultimate Shield, and my goal here was to make the tankiest immovable object in the game, and I feel that I have succeeded in that effort. So pulling it all together, Valhazak Vitality. Now this is actually pretty nice. What this is going to do is typically uh, when you take damage and you have that red on your health bar, that part will slowly recover. This will allow you to just keep recovering. So even out of combat, you basically don't have to use potions. This will just slowly heal you up over time. And I actually find it's quite nice to counter certain things like the damage you take from Alluvium, the flame damage that you'll take from Teo, stuff like that. It helps to counteract. Guard 5, of course, just because we're a blocky boy. Defense at 4, because that's a nice threshold since we pick up the elemental resists. Health at 3, because that plus the food buff is total lulls. Peak performance at level 3, giving us some attack. Recovery speed at 2, which is actually quite nice. Without this, without the, you know, the two-piece from this from the chest, um, you know, that, that healing actually doesn't happen too fast, but with this... Your health is noticeably always ticking upward, which is quite nice. Of course, as I mentioned, weakness exploit we only have at level 2. Dragon attack at 1 coming in off the chest, which does, of course, boost the damage up to 180. And guard up. Now, one thing I want to point out is weakness exploit. Uh, in running numbers, I found that if you don't have a very, very high uptime on weak spots, you're going to be better off going for level 3 peak performance over level 3 weakness exploit. Now this is a preference of mine. If you decide that you want to slot in a, a tenderizer gem into the Damascus Greaves and pick up weakness exploit level 3, more power to you. But the way I play Lance, I found that more often than not, the monster would kind of just run over me and I'd just sit there and I'd keep poking it in the underside and then I'd be off a weak point. 
And because of situations like that, I found putting peak performance up to level three was a better decision. Now, the last thing I want to touch on is, of course, our weapon. And a big thing to help facilitate all this is going to be the health regen augmentation. Now, we already have Valhazak's Vitality, and that's going to help heal us. But what health regen is going to do here is every single poke, we're getting back more health. And that's just basically going to ensure that we have close to 100% uptime on our peak performance. And on top of that, because of how often we are constantly poking the monster and we have such a high uptime on our target, it basically makes us close to unkillable. There'll be situations where, you know, even if you take a big hat attack and your health is low, you're better off just continuing to block and attack versus putting away your lance and chugging a potion. Because putting away the lance is quite slow, and to be honest, you could just sit there and hold right trigger, and as long as you let go every now and then to get some stamina back, nothing in this game could kill you. So, because of that, health regen was a natural inclusion into this, just ensuring that we keep our health nice and tip-topped off. But that is going to be the rundown of the build. Either way, a very, very defense-oriented build, but that was my goal here. You know, it's the ultimate shield. The idea is nothing is going to get through us, and I think I have a pretty good boss fight lined up to showcase that. So when considering a target for the Lance, I figured a good one would be Val Hazak. Um, now we already did Nier Gigante in a previous video, and aside from Teostra's Supernova, I don't find him that hard. And Shala, while annoying, I don't feel is particularly deadly, but one of the big things that can make Val Hazak difficult, of course, is his ability to reduce your maximum health and then subsequently one-shot you. So, with that in mind, is an excellent target to show just how resilient the Lance build is. I'm going to do a little mining here. I'm going to wait for him to round the corner. I suppose if these stupid things really want to die now, I won't stop them. My equal opportunity death dealer. I honestly hate these things, the freaking Raffinosas. They are so damn annoying. Come on, Val. Oh, and we're also fighting a tempered version here, so... Between the fact that he's tempered, and the fact that I have lower health, he should have the potential to one-shot me... ...if my guard drops. Just for good measure, let's go ahead and put this on... More than anything, uh, you should always run some type of mantle against Valhazak, because regardless of a mantle you have, having any mantle... ...will help prevent the Alluvium buildup. Since all mantles have a uh, mask. Alright, so Luvium is kicked in. And honestly, I'm not even going to counteract that. Typically, I would, uh,. I would go ahead and take a Nullberry to stop that. No. We're going to fight Tempered Valhazak with next to no health. Just to show how silly this is. You can see how just the constant attacks here, very quickly keeping our health topped off. So even with, um, I mean, well, obviously we're not taking damage from the Luvium right now because we do have on a, uh, a mantle, but that's about to wear out, at which point we will start taking Alluvium damage. And even then, 
will quickly end up healing through that. You know, that's the thing with the Lance. I mentioned it back at the, uh, back in the overview, but it's not going to be the most dynamic weapon. You're not running around. You're not doing, you know, crazy jumps or spins or anything like that. But you are just consistently penetrating the enemy over and over and over again. And it's, there's something that's satisfying about just staying on the target and constantly doing damage to it. Uh, obviously, it does take a fair amount of practice with uh, knowing when you should do your counter. I want to sharpen since we're down to white. And uh, similar to some of the other builds... Ooh! Now that's a move that can one-shot you. Um, because the Lance does burn through sharpness fairly quickly, you know, as I mentioned back at the start, and I'll stress it again, if you don't want the Vitality, feel free to work in the, uh, the Triple Grinder just so you have access to that speed sharpen because speed sharpening will certainly it'll get its uh it'll get its use with the lance rest assured like you will definitely see benefits of it um but for me at least you know if i'm gonna make something called the ultimate shield and have it be the most defensive creation to ever grace monster hunter i'm gonna take the defense i'm gonna take the health you know the whole point here is i want to be unkillable Which is kind of funny, um, just saying unkillable, because when we were first running this build and kind of tweaking it and getting it ready to go, um, but obviously, you know, it died a couple times while it was being created. And uh, every time it would die on stream, of course, chat thought it was the funniest thing. They're like, oh, unkillable, yeah. And, um, yeah, anyway. Now, one thing, you know, is obviously our health's getting low here. Oh, never mind, looks like he's going to run. Well, the point I was going to make is when the monster's health does get low, even if you're low, do not, and I can't stress this enough, do not pull away your lance and heal. You are going to be much better off keeping your guard out and poking your way back up. Now, if the monster leaves, yeah, put the lance away, heal up, get rid of whatever debuffs on you. Um, but otherwise, you know, because the lance is a very slow weapon to put away, because of that, you're always going to be better off just waiting and, you know, the monster is going to attack. It's not going to do anything to you. Touch me, you die. And then you can easily poke your way back up to full. But more often than not, when I was building this, um, the most common way I would die was trying to put away my lance to heal. Of course, that's the move we showed back earlier. You're doing the sprint. If you hit forward and X, you'll end up jumping, whereas opposed to just hitting X, we'll usually stop. Uh, doing the forward and X will cause you to jump, and it's pretty consistent for mounting monsters, as you saw right there, especially if you aim right at, like, the head. Now that the big boy's down, time to give him a little Thomas the Train. Trying to get up my guard in time. Go on and put away, put on vitality mantle quickly here. Waiting to see if he was going to attack before I made any moves. That's like the number one way I'll find that, um, you know, aside from putting items away, the other main way you'll end up getting hit hard with the lance is basically overextending yourself and not having your guard when you need it. Um, I don't remember if I mentioned it back at the, the overview at the start as well, but another thing to be cautious about are multi-hits. 
See, for example, right there. We got the counter hit. We blocked the first hit perfectly fine. But what ended up happening there was there was a second hit that came in. So you do have to be, uh, you know, be aware of the monster and the type of attack they're going to do. Because if it is a multi-hit attack, it can very easily, even though you'll block the first one, the subsequent attack can knock out your guard and potentially take you out. So one of the big things you want to be aware of as you play with the lance is when you're guarding, make sure you're doing counter hits on what are single attacks and not multi-attacks. Goodbye, Vitality Mantle, but you've served your purpose. Ooh, man. This is probably the point. Most of you were like, shit, I gotta heal, I gotta heal. Nope, the Lance. We just keep on doing this. Yes, look at this. Don't even care! So freaking OP. Now, I've said it once, I'll say it again. If you're having trouble with an Elder Dragon, or anything for that matter, you know, if you're just, if the main problem is you're carting too much, the Lance gonna get the job done. Like, it, no concern. We fought that with the, the health debuff for the majority of it long enough that it would, you know, naturally wear off. Um, but that was pretty cut and dry. Like, and obviously, once again, you know, you can load up on attack if you wanna make this even stronger, but because of how resilient we are and we've augmented our weapon with the health regeneration, we do have a very high uptime on uh, the peak performance. And once again, that's 20 attack as opposed to the 21 attack and 5% affinity that you'd get from getting attack all the way up to level seven. So we do still have very high damage while also being the ultimate shield. But either way, guys, that is going to wrap up this one. Definitely a really fun build to play despite the relatively simple play style of the Lance, you know, just being able to sit there and tank hits and just kind of shrug off everything a tempered elder dragon does is truly an awesome feeling let's see what rng jesus blessed us with a hero streamstone hammer and a lance nice maybe that'll go towards a gun lance but anyway gonna wrap this one up here thanks again as always for coming back make sure to leave your comments down below and we will catch you guys with the next build video as we bring on out the longsword